What's up, everybody? Welcome to the X and Yellow Podcast. It's me, Eddie, jumping on with you again. I've got an awesome guest with me, man. And you know, it's not often that you get an opportunity to talk about um, faith and fitness at this, in the same breath. I mean, I think that's why the X and Yellow Podcast exists. It's about merging these two worlds and, and really sort of reclaiming a lot of what God had originally designed for the human experience when it comes to the body, seeing everything as sort of interconnected. And I've got Matthew Gay on with me. Matthew Gay, he's a coach who's passionate about God honoring health. You know, everything I've seen from him online really says that he's also the author of fit church, destroying the division between following Christ and living a healthy life. Matt, thanks for jumping on with me. Thank you so much, Eddie. You're doing a great work here, man. I'm just excited to be a, a little part, a little part of it, man. I get to be a little part of your work. This is like, I'm, I'm honored to have you on man. Cause I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of seeing everything you're putting out. And I think we have, Similar messages. I think the most important thing is really getting people to see that there's a massive connection between faith and and health. Wouldn't you say? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, there's a there's a beauty to behold uh, when you approach your fitness journey with God at the center and, and commune with Him in this part of your life. And uh, I think the the more people grasp this reality, the more folks start getting free from the bondage that a lot of folks are experiencing nutritionally and regarding their own body image and fitness. Uh, break free from some of the shackles that the world yes. has kind of placed in this area of our lives, which is Come a on. very fundamental area of our lives. Um, and so as we do this with God, man, a, a whole a whole new view of this starts to kind of take over our minds and we get to experience him on a whole new level, which is the coolest thing ever. I want I want I want all of God and I don't want him. I don't want him outside of any 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 part of my life. So it's exciting. That's right. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I mean, it, you know, it does seem a little bit like fitness, health, wellness, diet seems to exist in its own little bucket. Like I can be uh, a, sort of a follower of God and outside of in, in sort of all other areas of life. But when it comes to like what I eat, what I how I move, that gets to stay over here. Why, why do you think people segment diet, exercise, health from the rest of their lives? Yeah. Or do they? I just, I just said that they, it's not talked about a lot, man. I mean, honestly, a lot of Christians, you got to think the church has such a major influence on their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, what is talked about at church, whether we like to admit it or not, tends to have a bit more of an emphasis in terms yeah. of the importance uh, that people, you know, place on certain topics. So, okay. you know, if we talk about adultery, we talk about pornography, we talk about, you know, different, those things are going to seem like, sins. Oh, this is bad. Like, wow, we really need to stay away from that, right? We got ministries for yeah. this. Like, this is great. This is definitely important. The, the church cares about this. My pastor cares about this. He's not, he's not laughing about it. So this is clearly a serious matter. I need to take these things seriously. But when it comes to like nutrition, when it comes to fitness, how you care for your body, just overall, it seems to be a distant conversation, one that you need to have outside of church. And I think that's why people get kind of hung up. Um, we don't mean to separate faith and fitness. But when it's just naturally being done in the place that we spend a lot of our time and get a lot of our doctrine and instruction for how to follow Jesus, it's inevitable that we're going to just do that in our own minds and in our own rights. Um, and it takes coaching because the physical element of our human existence, um, a, a, apart from sickness and, and, and death, right, um, it, it takes a bit of coaching in order to do it God's way, right? Yeah. Um, and shoot, even sickness, navigating that the right way right. takes a bit of coaching. It takes a bit of encouragement and people gathering around you. Um, but certainly things like meal prepping and waking up in the morning to exercise and walk and getting rest at night. How do I do that with God? And so not knowing how to even do that, I think is also grounds for why people separate it and put these two categories um, in, in their own boxes instead of seeing how our health journey is supposed to fall under the umbrella of our following Jesus and our relationship with him. Yeah. So we spend, you know, at least, you know, for those of us that go to the church, call ourselves, you know, followers of, of Jesus, we, we go to church, we hear about all sorts of stuff, you know, like, Hey, don't cuss, be, stay faithful to your spouse. Yeah. And there's all these godly biblical reasons for doing it, right? Absolutely. Hey, we, we, you know, you want to, you want to worship God. We believe the scriptures, but when it comes to, an area around, you know, taking care of your body, you know, b biblical stewardship, certainly of maybe your wallet financially and, mm -hmm. you know, of your family. But when it comes to your body, why, why do you think it's been neglected 
in the Christian faith? You know, why do leaders ignore this? Like, why aren't we talking about this more? Yeah, it's a comfort. I and mean, I, I think that that there's multiple reasons for this. You know, I've, I've been coaching for 11 years and why somebody has chosen to neglect their body, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, mm -hmm. intentionally or not, um, it, 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 it could be for so many different reasons. Um, yeah. That being said, I think for a lot, a lot of pastors, there is a, a huge emphasis on, on spiritual guidance, right? Um, and so they have to build up themselves in that regard and have to guide others in that, in that regard as well, too. So the, the, the significance in terms of their own body doesn't necessarily seem to be there. Um, mm. that's, that's one reason. Uh, another well, is that I think a lot of folks are just struggling, right? Um, pastors, church leaders, a lot of folks in, in their own right are struggling in terms of health and fitness. So it's kind of, it feels hypocritical to talk about something that you yourself are struggling with, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and why don't we talk? I mean, I, I agree, right? Like, so, you know, I've had people on the podcast before even mention, you know, it's hard to stand up and be, uh, speak with conviction and speak with, you know, any, any feel like any, like a uh, credibility, if mm -hmm. I know myself, and I'm struggling in this area, but like, I, and I know that's true, right? I'm sure pastors are, I mean, sometimes you can see that, that that's true, but I, yeah. I, I do wonder if, if it's not so much that they well, or it's not only that they're struggling, but maybe it's that they don't care, yeah. um, to, to bring that up. Do you think that's possible? I mean, certainly it's possible with like our neighbors, our friends, our family. Yeah. I mean, of course, there's plenty of, of, of pastors, leaders that don't necessarily care enough about yeah. this area to talk about it. Um, just not seen as, as significance. And again, I think you really do have to like take a close look at what the body is uh, in, in, in the context of God being creator, king, ruler, sovereign, right. um, being the one to whom we have died and been given life, right? Um, mm -hmm. Our bodies are not our own, is what Scripture tells us in Corinthians, right? We were bought with a price. Um, yes. so we want to honor God with our bodies, glorify God in our bodies. We're also told whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty all-encompassing, right? Whatever you do, do to the glory of God. Um, and so we see Scripture time and time again mention the body and mention how we should treat the body. We know that the body is a temple. Paul tells us to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, right? And he's not just talking about the body. He's talking about your whole life when he says present yeah. your body as a living sacrifice, right? Not just your body, everything in it, right? Your soul, yeah. your life, your being. Present that as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, right? And so when we consider what the body is, we then – and – our relationship with God truthfully, like truthfully, not just cherry picking, but like really considering our relationship with God, we belong to him, all of us. So now when I look at my body, I don't just see this as my body. I do truly see this as God's body that I'm stewarding, right? I see it, my health as a measure of health God has given me that I'm supposed to steward. Um, and so to neglect it, to mistreat it is disrespectful straight up. Mm -hmm. There's no way around that when you truly accept and you don't nitpick or try to warp the scripture to mean something that's convenient for you. When you truly consider my life is not my own bought with a price, right? Mm -hmm. Honor God with your body. When I really consider that, there's no way around it. If you if you if you're mistreating your body, you have to see it as I'm disrespecting God. This is dishonoring and displeasing to God. So I think failure to include the body in a life fully committed to God, like us being, you know, denying ourselves, taking up our cross and following him. I think that's been misconstrued. And, you know, therefore, a lot of folks just kind of toss it to the side as though health and fitness isn't really a part of the Christian thing. And because me walking with Jesus is the most significant thing in my life, then health and fitness being not connected to that seems pretty insignificant. Right. Have, do you have people that, I mean, certainly as a coach, you get people that are interested in you know, jumping in with you and learning, you know, Hey, I want to get myself healthy. But what about people that are unconvinced? Do you ever deal with people in your life that are unconvinced that it's important to care about their body? And they're like, whatever, I can see whatever I want. It's not a big deal. Yeah. I you, mean, how do you yeah, talk to I, those people? 
I, I get I get those people from time to time, I think because of the content I'm putting out the book and certain things that a lot of folks that I talk to, they have gotten it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like if they didn't get it before, I hear people all the time, like, man, like I'm convicted, or this spoke to me, or man, I really needed to hear that I've been messing up, like I need to get myself straight. So right. most of the stuff that I'm putting out on the on the internet or through my book is to break that belief. Right? Um, that's, that's, that's step number one, awareness belief breaking, we want to do that first. But the people who come to me and aren't convinced of that, um, one of the things that I found has been helpful is really taking the things back to the Garden of Eden and looking yeah. at yeah. Adam and Eve, right? Considering that God created mankind in his own likeness and image, fashioned him out of the dirt. And one of the things that I have people consider is that, hey, when God made the human body, he probably, he probably designed it with a bit of a will, right? Like he probably had an idea as to how this should work. Right. It's yeah. pretty, pretty complex when you look at the human body and what it does. And it's, it's, it'll yeah. blow your, your mind what it's mm -hmm. capable of doing. But uh, that's God's divine wisdom. Not only that, but before he even made us, he made our food. Right. It wasn't until after he made Adam that was like, hey, this is what I want you to eat. Yeah. Right. And this happens again. Right. When you look at Noah, after he floods the earth, the second time he starts human civilization again, he's like, remember how I gave you the vegetation? Now I'm giving you the animals. It's like right. every time God starts mankind, he's like, I need you to know what I want you to eat. Right. Like, yeah, he doesn't give many instructions to Adam or to Noah. But in that, in the few that he gives, it's like, this is what I want you to eat. And I'm like, well, what? you could you could dismiss that if you want. But I think how we treat what God has created is pretty important. And if you dim that down to maybe a child, right? My, I have an 11 year old. I was a nine year old. If my daughter, she loves to create things. If my daughter were to bring me, you know, uh, an origami duck or something like that, she loves to do <laughs> origami, right? Yeah. And I took it and I said, Oh, that's so wonderful. And I love you so much while I'm bawling it up in her face. She'd be <laughs> devastated. I'm telling her that I love her. I'm telling yeah. her that I'm so excited about what she does and I'm so proud of her artwork and that she's so creative and she should keep doing it while I'm balling up what she's created. Right. Now, on a very small level, on, on a light level, we could see that and say, that's terrible. Why would you destroy something that she created? I said, well, then why are you treating your body so badly? Mm -hmm. How do you think God feels about his creation? And, 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 and you know, of course, you know that you are much more valuable than a piece of origami or a sparrow or a daisy or whatever it is, right? You're worth much more than these things. So uh, why wouldn't he care about you and every part of you? Why would yeah, he want every part of you, right? If, if, it, if it wasn't significant, right? Like you were bought with a price. Your life is not your own. Going back to that, why would he want even your body and ask you to present your body as a living sacrifice if it wasn't significant? You think God wants something that's a waste of time? That's insignificant to him. Why would he even make it if it was insignificant? Did, did he make an accident? Was it on purpose? Was it not? Is it just like, oh, this is an extra? If God is not treating the body as insignificant, if Jesus didn't treat his body as insignificant, literally used it to bring salvation into the world, we probably shouldn't treat the body as insignificant either. Yeah, there's a, um, you know, American culture has adopted um, some pseudo ancient, you know, Gnosticism. We talk about this a lot, but there's this, to person body divide, right? Where the the soul and the 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 way we connect with God is one thing, mm. the body's another. Mm -hmm. And so, in in order for us to sort of justify our ability to eat is whatever you know junk we want to eat and behave however we want to behave, because listen, man, we're all sinners. We, Absolutely. you know, we're we're all we all fail in many different areas. Yep. In order to justify that and still maintain this sort of you know, faith that we, hey, we're made in God's image to maintain that sort of theological distinction. Mm -hmm. We have got to separate those two things. And so like that way, you know, if I'm kind of eating whatever I want, it's not really me. Yeah. Um, who I am is kind of me in my beliefs in God, sort of my soul, so to speak. So I don't know, how, how would you respond to someone that would say, and I'll just be honest, I get this all the time. Do you really? This is like the number one response. They always say, they quote something like, don't fear who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. They'll yeah. say that. They'll throw that verse. And then they'll say, like, God doesn't care about my body, man, so much as I love Jesus, as much as I long love God. Yeah. You know, I, it doesn't really matter. Oh, you know, and, and you just yeah. answer best. So I don't know how you'd respond to a person like that online in a short amount of time, but is there is there something you could say to someone, you know, quick soundbite to say, hey, man, you need to double check your sources on this stuff. 
Yeah, we're triune beings, right? Mind, body, spirit, right? Mm -hmm. that just we're made in God's likeness and image. He's a triune being, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, if he were to neglect one part of the Trinity, we'd have a big problem. Yeah. We, we, there's no part of us that God created um, that was a mistake. We can't neglect any part of who we are. Your body is a part of that, right? If it, if it weren't, then you'd have no house for the Spirit, right? Yeah. Um, he would not say that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, if again, if it were insignificant, if it wasn't, if it didn't matter to him. So yeah, in, in short, you are a triune being and you have to honor every part uh, of you that God has created building into you. Um, I think that's, that thing, that's the first place that I would go is understand your nature, yeah. how God, how God made you may let us make man in, in our image and in our likeness. Um, yeah. Come so. on. Come on. Yeah. I think that part of, part of your mission, man, and, and part of mine is gaining gaining this sort of reclaiming the original design of what God intended, you know, so somehow along the way we've divided these two things where we've been able to just kind of eat whatever potato chips, M&Ms, mm. pretzels, soda, beer, whatever it is, and just absorb all that. And that's totally fine. And I can yeah. do that, but that's devoid of any sort of disrespect to God because man, as long as I'm worshiping Jesus, and that's obviously a really important part yeah. of being a faithful follower of God is, is following him. But, but then there is the, the aspect of stewardship. And again, we talk about stewardship with the wallet. We talk about stewardship of, you know, first Timothy five, eight, if a person does not you know, provide the needs of their family, they're denied the faith and worse than non believer. We've got these passages where we say, Hey man, it's important that I, I care about my family. But when it comes to actually caring about your legitimate vessel, that does get neglected and ignored in such odd ways. And, and it's, it's a, it's baffling and confusing, but yeah. I think it does take, like you mentioned earlier, it takes, education and notoriety we, we need to tell people about this and i think as as leaders church leaders do have a responsibility and a weight to communicate some of this stuff i mean we communicate the dangers of getting too involved in politics obviously that's a really big deal right now um we should communicate the dangers of dying early because you, <laughs> for things you caused yeah right, like right? You, can't, you can't control if you some some parts of death you can't control if you're getting hit by a bus yeah. but hey you can control you know your high blood pressure and your chronic disease yeah and you know one of the things that i have to stress eddie you know i, I can't i can't leave it at the, the level of the physical because that's where a lot of folks are able like you said yeah. they're able to separate the two very easily when we leave it at oh like my health is important and you know blood pressure and all this <laughs> but the truth is I really don't believe that the reason God, I mean, yes, I know that he does care about our bodies and he needs us to be well because we really can't serve him well without the body. One, two, we can't really be the best witness that we can be if we are trashing what God has created and then saying that we love him and encouraging other people to be self-disciplined. You're a hypocrite, right? And so there's, there's that part. So he doesn't want to, he doesn't want us messing with our witness. He doesn't want us messing with his creation, but there's, there's a deeper part of this because God truly loves us loves us, right? Not just what we look like. He doesn't just love how we're perceived or whatever that he, he, he doesn't care as much about that as he does us. That being said, why do we have the diets or, or diet, dietary issues that we have? Why do we have the habits that we have, right? Why are you mistreating yourself this way? That's where I think God is really concerned. Um, for example, um, someone comes home from a very stressful day, right? It's gonna be a man or a woman, right? very stressful job, things maybe not going so hot, right? And whenever things get hard, they find themselves in the pantry, right? I just, I just, it'll make me feel better. Okay. So is God upset about the fact that you're in your pantry eating Oreos right now? Maybe not so. Okay. Well, then what, why would he be upset about that? Well, let's consider this. You're stressed out. You had a very rough day. And you've come home and you have a moment now to gather yourself and to deal with your emotions. You have one of two options in your case. You could go to the pantry, which you've made a sanctuary, or you could go to God, right? You could pray. You could do something that would allow you to work through this in a godly manner, right? Keep a sound mind about this and go to him where he'd actually provide you with the solution. God is being replaced yeah. in that moment. Mm -hmm. That's what he's upset about. Not Come necessarily. On. He doesn't care about roles. He doesn't care about six packs. How you've gotten to where you are is more what, where, where God is concerned, not necessarily that you are where you are. If you've got 50 pounds to lose, fine. But 
why do you keep making promises to yourself that you don't keep? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Stop being inconsistent. Stop saying you're going to do things that you don't follow through on because you're permitting yourself to do that, which is con which is you're having a conversation, you're communicating to yourself that that's permissible in other areas as well, too, whether you acknowledge that or not, right? I can't, if I can't trust you to take care of yourself, how can I trust you to take care of other people, to be honest with other people, if you can't be honest with yourself? So there's some, there's some training going on internally at a soul level, at an emotional level, at a psychological level, where God is wanting us to be conformed to the image of his son, not just what we look like in helping people and being a helping hand and uh, you know, that certain, certain good acts, he wants us to let, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus, right? Is what Paul tells us. I need to think like Christ, which then means there's no way on God's green earth. I could imagine Jesus being like, my body don't matter. We all know the story, right? We all know the story and how he used his body and what his body endured. Jesus was not out of shape. He dealt with bricks and wood. He walked everywhere. He ate whole food. Like, come on, right? So if we're, if we're truly following Jesus, we don't want to cherry pick what elements or aspects or characteristics of Jesus we're, 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 we're following. We want to truly consider him in all aspects. And again, it goes back to how do I think? How do I believe um, in, in regards to just how I'm approaching my life. I think when we get to the root level like that, that's when we start dealing with some of the bad habits. When we start to just, oh, behavior change, that works to some degree. But when you get to the root of why somebody is overeating for no reason, why somebody is saying yes and they're gonna start on Monday and by Tuesday they're quitting, why somebody is being lazy, that that's where you get to deal with the problems God is most concerned with, because though, if, if you can really solve those problems and get to the root of that, if he can heal you in that way, it is going to transcend multiple other areas of your life that are way beyond health and fitness, but it will also impact your fitness. Yeah, dude. Wow. If you're listening, man, that's, that's worth your weight. I mean, you get what you pay for, but man, that's, that was really <laughs> awesome. I mean, that's, that's amazing, Matt. The, the, the part about the fact that the, te that the, the pantry becomes a temple. Yes, it becomes a moment you go in weakness or in celebration, in lament, whatever, whatever emotion you feel. If you find yourself sort of quote unquote worshiping at the at the foot of the at the foot of the pantry, yeah, and then then you then you could for sure understand how eating quote caring for your body is not purely a physical yeah. um, thought. It, it, it is in fact a fully connected mind, body, spirit. Yeah. exercise idea entity that's clearly taking place here. Those two things are inextricably linked. Absolutely. I mean, Martin Lloyd Jones, who is a, a medical doctor and a theologian, he would say that there's no way you can separate the two. I mean, if you find yourself depressed and you think it's, you know, mainly a spiritual or mental thing, you'd be, you'd be foolish to understand that. Like clearly depression has, there's physical connections yeah. to depression and vice versa. You might yeah. find yourself, um, you might find yourself clearly depressed, and it's actually a a, a, a psychological or spiritual situation. And then, yeah. so the point is, there's an entity that the human body is this connected being. So I love that you pointed that out because I think people could easily leave a, a podcast and go, "Oh man, I gotta, I gotta find myself a diet." And and maybe that's that's true. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's not it's just that. that. There's other things happening. Yeah, Eve Eve didn't. <laughs> oh, man, Eve didn't eat the fruit just because it looked good, right? It does right. say that she saw that it was good for food, yeah. but it also said that she, she saw that it was good to make one wise, right? This is after mm -hmm. being convinced that God's word wasn't true, that God wouldn't actually follow through on his promise, uh, that she needed to be like God uh, instead of remembering that she was already made in God's likeness and image, right? So that I, I see the enemy using food a day, all, well, all the time. It, it didn't stop in the garden of Eden. Uh, it worked once. I don't see why he would stop using that. But a lot of folks are struggling nutritionally, right? Specifically, a lot of folks are struggling in this regard because they are trying to autonomously fulfill a void or fix a problem uh, their way, right? Where God says, I'll give you peace and you feel anxious, you eat, right? Um, be angry and sin not. Well, you're going and being gluttonous when you're angry, right? Like, you know, like there's scripture after scripture, we see how God tells us to navigate our thoughts and our emotions, even our intentions, and to humble ourselves moment by moment to him, allowing him to then exalt us, right? Rather than the opposite. 
and I think in moments where we we make emotional decisions that are unhealthy, uh, we are exalting ourselves in that moment because you are then trying to do something that God is supposed to. I well, you know, I, God, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sit, I sit down all day long, don't get good rest at night, sleep in, don't exercise at all, don't eat healthy. You you kind of then okay, well, I'm not, I'm not going to work out. I'm not going to switch anything because this is what I need and this is what's best for me. I need to I need to stay up late. I need to I need to you know stay in late as well too. I need to just eat whatever's convenient. I don't have time to like. Oh word. Okay. So like, let's, let's disregard, right. you know, what, what got, so instead of, instead of searching and seeking God for rest and order and instruction, right. Um, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord, acknowledge God in all your ways. He will direct your path, right? Like we see us actually taking God into consideration with every aspect of our lives. Um, instead of doing that, I think a lot of us just kind of take matters into our own hands and that involves a health journey. Have you actually sat down and considered what changes God wants you to make right now? Forget what Matt says on online. Forget what YouTube is telling you. Forget what your sister's doing and the diet, she, you know, the detox that she's yeah. doing and the waist trainer. Forget all of that, right? Like, have you ever actually prayed a, a, a sincere prayer and said, God, something's off. I don't have any energy. I'm overweight. My knees hurt all the time. I don't feel good in my body. Am I doing something wrong? And will you show me what that is and help me? to make these changes because I, I, I can't just keep doing diets. I've tried time and time again, Lord reveal to me by your spirit, convict me as needed, right? Have mercy, but convict me and let me know what changes need to be made so that I can do them in obedience and in honor to you. Have you, have you prayer or prayed a prayer like that? Or has it just been, I got to get the scale to move. I'm trying to get into these jeans, bump all that. <laughs> you don't lose a single pound, yeah. but you start living your life to the honor and mm -hmm. glory of God in this part mm -hmm. of your life, he is pleased. That's right. Because he loves you regardless of what you weigh. Regardless, he doesn't care about an inanimate object that, that weighs literally whatever you put <laughs> on it, right? You could, you could put a, a box yeah. of rocks on it. It would tell you a certain number. He doesn't care about what that has to say. He does mm -hmm. look at the hearts of man. He looks at our thoughts and our intentions. He, mm -hmm. he seeks us at a, at a root level, at a deep level. And he wants us to be healed. He wants us to experience his fullness and to, and to walk in the wholeness is for freedom. Say Christ died to set us free. We don't want to be bound to a, a, again, to a yoke of slavery. We don't want to literally carry around shackles with us. We want to lay aside yeah. every weight and sin, which clings so closely and run with endurance the race set before us looking to Jesus, right? Like right. that's, that's what we're instructed to do. And I think there's a lot of folks right now that are bound up. God doesn't want his people bound by anything, especially not something like a fork and knife, especially yeah. not something like, like a company like, like Frito-Lay or, or so, like, no, like that's, that's not what that that's, that's not why Jesus died full freedom, right? Yeah. Authority yeah. over the enemy, over the things that, that, that bound us over the flesh, walk in the spirit. Don't, don't keep giving the flesh a, a, a say so in your daily habits. It's, 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 it's self-destructive in nature. Yeah. Dude, Frito Lay's catching strays in this podcast. Bro, you know what? I'm coming for them. If y'all don't come out with something healthier, I'm going to keep them. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, they're, they're not, they don't catch strays. They're fully in the crosshairs on this, on this show. They are. So, they yeah. are. Duck. duck. You, you're good to go. <laughs> you know, it's It's what's so cool about what you do as a, as a health coach, you know, and a lot of people do as, as coaches, um, is – you get you get somebody that shows up that's saying, you know what, I don't feel good, or my doctor told me I need to exercise more, or I, you know I want the scale to drop, like you mentioned, I want the scale to drop. But as they venture down a journey, if they're if they're properly oriented and see this as a full holistic understanding of their body, mind, body, spirit, that they are not just a a, a human being, but they're a worshiper, they're a steward they're a son or a daughter and they, and they, and they grab that, they grasp that identity and they journey down a, a, a path towards good health. It's not just the scale that moves. Yeah. It's, it's oh the, gosh. it's the, it's the element of worship. It's the connectedness to God. It's the better relationships you have. It's, yes. it's the legitimate performance and yeah. feeling good well being. I mean, longevity, mm -hmm. everything goes in the right direction. Yeah. So I, I think it would be foolish to say this is all about weight. 
but since we're down that path, let's talk about it for a second. <laughs> the, the, the other side, the other side of this whole thing isn't body bodily neglect; it's vanity, and that vanity obsession. I think sometimes people do go, "Well, I'm not going to eat healthy because it's vain," and I think that can be used as an excuse to not eat healthy. But nonetheless, there is, especially online, there is a such thing as vanity, and there is a such thing as certainly things like eating disorders, but. But how do you keep people, as you've brought people into good health, how do you keep them from going off the other side of the ship, focusing too much on the body instead of not enough? Yeah, so we, we teach a blueprint called the Kingdom Fit Blueprint, and everything is rooted in, in God's word, right? And so it helps kind of, I don't have to come up with my own personal constructs for, for this or plans, whatever. I go based off of God's word. If we keep Christ at the center truly and, and, and submit to him, bow down to him, right? Fall prostrate before him. It, 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 it doesn't go off the rails, right? So we, we approach fitness this way. Healthy living is a form of worship, right? That's one of the chapters in my book. Healthy living is a form of worship. When you are worshiping God with this part of your life, um, the emphasis isn't on you. What happens is a lot of folks, uh, they start eating healthy. They start tracking their macros. They start going to the gym and, you know, join some sort of workout class, whatever it is. They got to do the best and the most right, to, to lose weight because of, of, of what they want, right? Ultimately, because of the outcome that they are willing to do all of this for because of whatever, re, whatever, whatever they think is going to bring them, right? So they ultimately end up at the center of their health journey. They are self-serving, right? Not meaning to and not making that a bad person, just saying you are self-serving. If you're not doing something for God in terms of health and fitness, you're doing it for yourself or other people. That's just, I'm not, <laughs> uh, you, don't have to re, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that yeah. out. You, you're doing it for somebody, right? We can all right. agree on that. You're doing it for somebody, right? Mm -hmm. um, even if you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it for your kids, you're doing it for your husband, you're doing it for, you know, the guy at the gym, whatever it is. So if, if you're doing it for him, um, you, you end up having a more level head and there's more balance because now even your approach begins to shift towards what does God want? Um, a lot of the obsession, the vanity, it, it comes from self-seeking. It comes from self-serving. Um, and so you kind of set yourself up for failure in that regard. If you remain at the center of your fitness journey, you can expect that there's no guardrail for that, right? If I'm doing something for God, well, then I've got his word as a guardrail. I've got it as what I'm standing on. If I step too far to the left or too far to the right in terms of the platform of God's word, I will fall and he will pick me up and, re and place me back on it. But ultimately, ultimately, I get that wake up call from falling, right? Um, whereas if I'm serving myself, I make the platform as wide as I want or as narrow as I want. And people say, I, fall off, I keep falling off the wagon. Well, fix the wagon. Stop hopping back on. Choose a new wagon. Right. Come on. <laughs> don't, don't go keep getting off the, on the same wagon and fall off. So the, the wagon can't be something that you built. And that's, that's it. So when, you, when, when God, if, unless God builds a house, the, the, the builders labor in vain. Right? Who's building the house of your health journey and your your your, your health habits and, and your lifestyle systems and the standards that you have for yourself? Um, that that's that's where that comes from. I think we yeah. just we, we root our standards and, and strategies and tactics in, in results and we serve results over God. And um, at that point you're willing to do whatever it takes. Wow. Yeah, it, that's why we call it like the you know two sides of the same coin, or you know t two sides, the opposite sides of the ship. Yeah, you know it's either way. You know Romans one, you're worshiping created things rather than the Creator. So whether yep. it's food and comfort, uh, or it's the human body, or the lust that, or the gr the vanity that that brings, yeah. two sides of the same coin is God's not in position of worship. It's something else. And so that, that something else could be anything. It could be the new couch. It could be the new car. It could be the home. It could be the job. It could be the, the girl at the gym, the guy at, at, at the coffee shop. It, it could be your own set of abs. It could yeah. be anything. And I think we are, we are absolutely creatures of worship. So the opposite of, opposite of uh, worshiping God isn't not worshiping anything. <laughs> the opposite of worshiping God is idolatry. It's worship. Yes, it's, absolutely. It's worship. Plainly put. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I know that's a big like theological word, but at, at the end of the day, you know, we end up worshiping God with our resources or we don't. And uh, we have to be very careful. I mean, I, you don't, I mean, I don't think you have to be a, a person of faith. You could be, you could be literally anybody you flip on Instagram, you understand what it's about. It is a idol worshiping factory. Oh it is gosh. about people. It's about money. It's what, what you name it. 
Right. I mean, how did how did a yeah. tutorial video on bicep curls end up being about your butt? Like why <laughs> why is your butt the centerpiece of a bicep curl oh. video? What, what's going on here? I thought we were doing <laughs> bicep curls. Why are you and, backwards? Turn around. <laughs> and the camera always starts at the bottom, and you're like, oh man, I just feel like I had a. This is a great smoothie, and you're like, what, what are we? Right. Hold on. What are we watching here? Come on now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's out of whack. I, worshiping created things rather than the creator. That's what that's about. Yeah. Uh, what about men? Um, you mentioned you have kids, and I I, I, you you have eleven nine year old. I have eleven and nine year old. I've also Stop. got a seven and a three year old. Oh, We're in the gone. same boat. But what do you think the responsibility is of a man, in particular, in the home, to care for themselves as it relates to their family? Yeah, you, you're the priest of your house, man. And, and you know the, the example that we set, man. It's such a unique and really cool opportunity to be a, like a, a father or a mother, honestly, just to be a parent mm -hmm. in general. Because no doubt, uh, you you have these these human beings that, while they're getting to know God, to them you kind of are God, right? Like they, we know we're not God, right? So no lightning coming right now. But right. what I mean by that is, in terms of who provides for them, who protects them, who they ultimately need for everything, who they're reliant on, their sole source of hope, and who they have their ultimate faith in, it's kind of you, right? And so your influence really does matter. It really does. And while they may grow to um, understand that your habits were not the best, um, quite often your influence uh, doesn't lead to them finding that uh, as early as they should have. And so we kind of unintentionally set our kids up for failure or for not, not failure, but because this is life, you, you can't really yeah. fail at it, but to, for struggle, for struggle. Not only that, but sadly, I see a lot of guys who are their wives biggest obstacle in this regard. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked primarily with women. And I say primarily because it's been about 30% guys, right? So the majority mm -hmm. of the people that we work with has been ladies. That being said, man, I've, I've heard so many times and it's been frustrating to me to, at, at times because I can see a woman who is trying to take care of herself for the betterment of her family, for the betterment of her husband, for the sake of the kingdom, um, for, for shoot for herself even. And um, the issue is, well, my husband keeps bringing home pizza and my husband doesn't really care about that part or he's skinny, so he eats whatever he wants and da 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 da, -da and all this. Um, and I'm sitting here thinking, man, you're, su you're, you're supposed to be setting the example for her. Like you're supposed to be building her up, right. And adorning her and washing over her with the word of God and loving her sacrificially to the point where you, you're, you're giving yourself like Christ loved the church. Right. And a part of that giving of yourself right. means that you are, you're submitting, right. There's a, there's, there's, a, there's a, here's a thing, man, like our wives, yes, they're, they're called to submit to their husbands, right. Like, like the church to, 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 to Jesus, that being said. We are called to love our wives, right? And so what does love look like? It is not just a feeling. It's an action. Um, how you love your wife should be drawing her towards godliness, towards wholeness, towards healing, right? Um, towards continuous revelation and growth in her spiritual walk, right? Uh, physically, she should be getting better, right? Encouraging her subtly and graciously, but consistently, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and walking the walk with her yes. uh, so that she's seeing it, she's feeling that. There, there is a spiritual bond between a husband and a wife. Um, the two have become one. They're made one flesh, right? And so her body is your body. Your body is her body. I could go on and on, but ultimately, you know, specific, specifically speaking, even in, the, in, in terms of the marriage, there's a covenant there, right? And it illustrates the gospel for us, mm -hmm. right? The, 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 the bride of Christ being the church and God being our bridegroom and the mm -hmm. unity there and, and the love going back and forth and him giving his life for us and us dying to ourselves and living for him and all of that. It's, we see a little picture of that in marriage. Well, her, her health really does matter. Right. And so that that's, that's one element of this. The kids, the same thing, man. Like we, we do not want to cause anyone to stumble. It talks about if, if, if eating causes your brother to stumble, like don't, don't eat the meat, like just wait till later. Right. Like don't do something that's going to cause your brother or sister to stumble. Well, I certainly don't want my kids to stumble. Like I don't, I don't think God sees that yeah. very nicely. Right. So am I causing my kids to stumble in the way that I live my life and the way that mm -hmm. I treat my body? I'm going to love my neighbor as myself. I've got to consider there's a couple ways that I love my neighbor. One, it's mm -hmm. by what I literally do for them. Two, it's by the example that I set. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Well, I want people to look at my life as a father, as a husband, yeah. as a man. And in five years, 
They're not sicker because they've been doing what I've been doing. They're healthier <laughs> because they've been doing what oh. I've been doing. They're closer to God because of what I've been doing. Yes. Right? So I, I, the, 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 the opportunity that I have as an ambassador for Christ, as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, is, is wonderful. Uh, I, I'm here to be a light and salt to preserve and to, to illuminate Christ. I, I, I struggle seeing that we can do that appropriately while neglecting the body, not taking good care of it or obsessing over the body on the other side of these things and, and, and being vain. So we've got to find that healthy, like a godly balance in terms of how we care for our bodies, for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Yeah, I love that point. You know, we we'll look at your wife, look at your kids or look at your husband. Is your family, is your family better off for following your, your wisdom? Yeah. Do they, are they healthier? Are they spiritually healthier? Are they mentally healthier? Are they physically healthier? It's a really good barometer for, for a family. And, it, and listen, you know, feasting's all over the Bible. It's important to, you know, enjoy yourself, at, you know, at times. But when we get into a, a situation where we're always, quote unquote, feasting because, you know, the Cowboys lost or, you know, whatever, you know, like, you know, it's, it, you know, I'm going golfing, so I've got to, you know, I've got a drink or, you know, it's yeah. a birthday party, so I've got to have three pieces of cake and there's snacks and it's like every single scenario you're in, there's constant feasting and there's not careful stewardship over the types of food that you're providing for your family so that yeah. they can flourish, so they can be good in school, so that they could be attentive, so they're not growing up with ADHD and all these different chronic disease and they're, they're growing up with chronic diseases, behavioral disorders as a result of the things they're eating and the things they're drinking. I mean, that is in so many ways, a parent's responsibility to yeah. their kids is to care for them in that way. Certainly, you know, the school systems are not, Healthy. that's not their number one priority when yeah. it comes to what they're feeding your kids. Um, you've got, it, it's not just about what they're teaching your kids at school. It's also about what they're feeding your kids in school. I mean, yep. I'll tell you what, during COVID, I mean, the stuff, every, it was like every kid gets a free lunch, you know, sort oh, yeah, of thing. You go to the sending, school and get it home. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so like my kids are coming home with these lunches at, when they were half yeah. days and we were sending them with lunch, but then they come home with their the extra lunch. Oh, I didn't eat this. And I pull out the, the main course in it, in it is a, you know, like the uncrustable uh, yes. peanut butter and jellies, but it was a, a peanut free uncrustable. So it with a, a, a canola oil based uh, peanut butter like material with jelly in this white bread pouch with like a chocolate milk, um, a couple carrots, grapes, um, a, a yo play yogurt with like 60 grams of sugar. And I'm like, this is what they're giving the kids. I mean, it is absolutely a parent's responsibility to make sure they're not just giving their kids yeah. like literal trash Anything, or prison yeah. food. Yeah, you got you got to watch you got to watch that for sure, and just just you know, just guard them, man. They don't know. Yeah, and you know, I was a you know, my background. I mean, I grew up poor. I grew up eating free lunch at school. I mean, you've got to do what you have to do. It depends mm -hmm. who the, who the person is. Obviously, there's no judgment for me on that. I understand the the play of growing up in poverty and eating what you have to eat as a kid. I did that, um, but if you're a parent and you have the the means to be able to absolutely. to prevent to be able to help and serve your children, you should absolutely do it. If yeah. You can. yeah, yeah, and and educate them, you know, to, to the best of your knowledge. Which which takes honestly, it just takes you trying to get one percent better each day, right? Cool. Like, cool. don't leave yourself in the dust because now you have kids. Like, yeah. you, you're not dead, right? And again, <laughs> they they need you to set the example. Yeah. They don't just need to listen to what you're saying. They need to see it done. Um, most most human beings are visual visual That's learners, cool. so I can hear what you're saying, but if I don't see it, it's not resonating. I promise you, it's not sticking. Um, you're going to you're going to see in your kids what you're demonstrating more than what you're saying. Um, yeah. So the goal here is not let me, you know, go all strict on my family and cut all this out and do all these things. Right. That's not what we're suggesting here. No, more so it's you keep getting better and bring your family with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Invite them on the journey with you. You keep getting stronger. You start you keep addressing the weaknesses that you have and the flaws that you notice and that God is bringing to your awareness, you keep yes. addressing them with God's help and, and, and his good graces and bring, bring them with you and, and, and let them see you struggle through the journey yeah, of getting better. Good. Let them witness you being transformed by the renewing of your mind and let them see the testing that's allowing you to prove 
the will of God, which is good and acceptable and perfect, right? Like let them see all of that. Be, let them be a part of that because what's going to happen then, and this is a witness even for the people who aren't children, just the people in your life, your friend, your family, like this is a witness for them because a lot of folks have this mental heckler going on in their mind. They don't really know what it looks like to brace challenge for the sake of change. When they see you doing this, it now gives me permission as a child, as your friend, as your family member, to then embrace the challenges that I'm facing and say, I'm gonna do something about these. If yeah. so-and-so is, is taking it one step at a time and getting knocked down, but keeps getting back up, maybe I can do that as well too. This is why group classes are so fun, right? Because you see other people struggling. This is why being at a football game and it's raining and it's freezing and everybody's wearing ponchos and they're all screaming and hollering together like why because if that guy can still be having fun well shoot i'm gonna i'm gonna swing my terrible towel yes i'm a steelers fan i'm gonna i'm gonna go. i'm gonna swing my terrible towel as well too so you know allow allow that's this is ministry man like this is the coolest part about you know presenting your body as a living sacrifice man is allowing god to allowing people to see you following god and what that looks like in the good the bad and the ugly that is a great witness for the for the unbeliever and the believer. The unbeliever needs to see that we do not think we are perfect and that we we realize we've got some room to grow and that That's we right. struggle too. And when we acknowledge our struggles, right, a lot of the 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 backlash and the frustration from a lot of non-believers is you guys don't own up to the mistakes. You don't own up to your flaws yeah. and failures. You Holy. dismiss them. You just pray them away, but like you don't do anything about them. Like let's get serious about addressing what God does not like about our lives and, and allow God to or allow people to see what he's doing, allow people to see the journey and bring them along if you can. So, um, we I think we spent most of this time firing everybody up. They're like, let's go, man. They've got to go. Charge. Come on. Let's let's charge let's charge hell with a squirt gun. Let's go. Like, let's <laughs> let's do this. But like how, what are we let's help some people out. So you yeah. got an average person coming to you. Where do they start? They've decided they want to take charge of the health. What are some baby steps? They're like, man, I, you can start this week towards getting a healthier, better version of themselves. Yeah. So there's a, there's a few things that you could do. Um, one, grab my book, man, Fit Church. It's a great place to just sit Come down on. and read and consider a biblical approach to health and fitness. Mm -hmm. Continue on kind of expanding on this this, this perspective that we're sharing. Mm -hmm. I go a lot more in detail. Um, this is great for church leaders. Um, it's great for people who are trying to get into better shape. Shoot, it's even great for people who are trying to help others get into better shape. So definitely- yeah, I'm gonna throw the I'm going to throw the link in the, in the show notes, for everybody listening, there'll be, there'll be a 100%. link in the podcast notes and uh, on YouTube. 100%. Yeah. From there, I have an online community called fit church unlimited. And in there I've put lots of resources, workout programs, recipes, devotionals. We run weekly um, accountability kind of sweepstakes where we give away $25 gift cards and a hundred bucks every month. And just we're having fun there and keep people moving in that regard. And then from there, we've got our transformation challenge where it's a year long. We work with you one-on-one, -on -one, transform your life completely. And at the end of the year, you actually have the opportunity to win $1,000 for experience oh, nice. transformation. So there's a lot of things that we're doing here, um, but I'll I would throw say, links for all of that stuff as well in, yeah. the, in the notes for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and with, the, with, with working with us one-on-one, -on -one, the starting point there is just let's have a conversation. I, I either think that it's going to be a great fit for us or I'll give you some pointers, right? And you'll be able to get started in that regard. But regardless, I'll make sure that it's worth your time and make sure that I'm confident we can certainly help you. So, yeah, absolutely. Love to talk. Yeah. So if someone's listening to this and they need they need some tips, they like they, they heard you, but they're not they're not convinced. Like, I I, I, I want to do this, but like, what can I start today? Like, I need some proof in the pudding. Like, what do I do? Do I? Do I cut out soda? Do I stop eating gluten? Like there's keto diets and vegan diets and whole 30 and all these different, like what, what are like one or two things I can do like today that'll help me and go get going in the right direction. Go ahead and open up your calendar. Okay. And I want you to time block three days over the course of the next week, mm -hmm. 20 minutes to 30 minutes where you can do some form of exercise. Now, if you don't know what Come it on. is that you're going to do walk, just walk, put one foot in front of the other. If you can't walk, then bike or do something with your upper body, right? Um, use cans, use, use dumbbells, whatever the case may be. You can find plenty of things on YouTube, but just time, create the space is what I'll say. A lot of folks, we just don't make time, we're busy. So make the time for it. That's the first thing. Uh, Eddie, I'm also gonna give you a link. It's, this is totally for free, but I have a plate method guide. And okay. this is where you'll be able to find a structure for nutrition that is biblically based, 
that is not going to require you to track any numbers, weigh any foods out. You're going to use your eyes and start working on your relationship with food using the plate method. Love Pick it. a plate plan that's good for you and then just follow the instructions there. Um, that, I think that would be a great place for you to start. So one, that's go great. ahead and time block and, and commit to that. Actually hold yourself accountable to it and walk or do some sort of fit, fit exercise for the 20, 30 minutes and then go ahead and create a meal plan after you pick a plate plan from the, from the plate method guide. That's great advice. So you got two things you got, Hey, pick a couple days a week where you're going to actually do some movement. So wherever you're starting. So if you, if you're like, I do nothing, like, just like Matt's saying, walks are huge. Like, let's start there, yeah. like wherever it is, start at the level you're at. And then you've got this plate method. It's going to be help you d decide exactly. And correct me if I'm wrong. This is going to help you decide exactly what types of food are going to be on your plate. Yep. You're going to have a um, meal structure, meal frequency. Perfect. Yeah, learn how to, and this is cool because once you learn the plate method, you can take it with you anywhere, vacation, weekends, holidays, doesn't matter. I've had folks using this for years. I use it myself. Um, and, and it's cool because you can even adjust it, right? You can go up and down in terms of plate plans. If you want to lose a little weight and what you're doing is not causing weight loss, you can go down to the next plate. But regardless, just having a structure that, 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 that permits freedom um, is where I, we find sustainability and growth. And so that, that'll provide awesome. that for you. That's great stuff. Matt, is there anywhere else people can find you? Instagram, website? Yeah, fitchurchunited.com. Check us out. Mm -hmm. Fitchurchunited.com. Matt, thanks so much for blessing people, man. You're doing awesome work. The link is going to be in for the for Fit Church, the book, um, combining Wait, these two it. worlds, getting after it, man. I hope people find this valuable, but man, thank you so much for jumping in with me. Yeah, God bless you, Eddie. This is great. Thank you, man. You got it.